What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Taste Tuesday on Taste of the Gaming Show, where we talk about gaming news. My name's Seth. I'm Josh. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. And, uh, yeah, we're moving into a new month. So, um, just a quick reminder to play, uh, let's see, Tales of the Borderlands and Abzu, which are both coming out for PlayStation Plus. Uh, make sure to play those. Come back at the end of the month. We're going to do the same. Looks like Abzu is a underwater adventure game. Almost kind of reminds me of Journey, in a sense. Looks kind of neat. And uh, Tales of the Borderlands, which is a game I already bought, so this doesn't really benefit me, but it'll give me a reason to fucking play it, um, is a uh, Telltale game. So very much like all the other games based in the Borderlands world. Looks pretty neat as well. Uh, well I've played a little bit. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, new month, so new game of the month. Uh, Chevy, what is our game of the month? Uh, Dungeon Defenders 2. Cool. Uh, I believe this is free play right now. I, when I bought it, it had like been in early access. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's free to play. Uh, make sure to uh, play that throughout the month. We'll be doing the same. Um, you have no excuse not to play it. It's free. Um, and uh, yeah, with that, we have five bits of news. So uh, yeah, let's get into that. Uh, for first bit of news, um, not really a whole lot here, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, some dude on Twitter uh, named N Dragon uh, hit up Phil Spencer and said, Phil, will we ever get a Fable 4? The original Fable played a big part for me in my life earlier when I owned an Xbox. He responded, nothing to announce right now, but I do think the IP has a lot of places it could go. Um, now, there is no Fable 4 planned, but it is interesting that he is uh, seeming optimistic about it considering uh, the last Fable game got scrapped. What do you guys think about the idea of a uh, new Fable what do you think it could be, and is there room for Fable? Didn't uh, didn't Lionhead get disbanded though? Yeah. So it'd be somebody else making it. I don't know how they feel about that. <clears throat> I mean, the biggest issue I had with Fable was it was such a big idea that never seemed to ever get realized, and then it started getting lazy. But uh, I think it'd almost be refreshing with the new team, to be honest. This is where I'm at. I, we actually talked about this not that long ago. Well, actually, I talked about this to myself on a on an episode a while back on IPs that uh, that Xbox should be uh, bringing back out. And um, I actually thought the idea of somebody else making Fable would be a better thing, just because Fable's kind of played out. Fable Two was the best Fable in my opinion. Fable One had the best atmosphere, but Fable Three was so, so fucking empty of a game um, that maybe getting somebody in there with new ideas could could revitalize this uh, series, considering that Fable had certain strengths that other games didn't have. It had a dark fantasy world. It had um, a charming, almost like Sims-like uh, feeling to it with the people and how ridiculous they were. And the whole like aspect of like not only going out and adventuring, but also like just kind of living a life and getting married and stuff like that are all really cool ideas that I think they could definitely um, elaborate on. So I hope that they will take all those ideas and take it to a place that can kind of make the game a more bigger and more grand uh, scale on you know the same scale as like a Skyrim or something. Uh, I'd be really happy to not see the old silver-tongued fucking Molyneux well, he's not the trying deal. to play it up because I mean then maybe when it comes out I won't be so disappointed. <laughs> but um, no, he's playing up another game. Yeah, no. that didn't make the news because I won't talk about it yet. Yeah. Two was the best one. Um, Three was a horse shit pile of crap, and uh, it, 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 it was lazy. It was uh, very uh, badly done. Um, Fable was obviously kind of just petering out by then, um, so I'm really glad. So if Phil Spencer has something to say about it, uh, hopefully it does move on to a new team. You're right. Maybe the new ideas will, you know, reinflate the fa the the Fable name because right now there's nothing in the there. Fable balloon. Yeah. It's so deflated right now. <laughs> it is. It was popped. Boom. They're filling in. They pop They pop the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. I would love to see it on a Fable game. and I, I would love to see it, though, with a better graphics done to mm -hmm. it. Um, not like massively overdone graphics, because I think there's something to say about the cartoony quality of it. Yeah, I would hope they'd keep that kind of theme. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely just fine-tune it a bit more. Make it some of the textures a little stronger, not so hard, like, cut-and-paste look to it. Less play doh -y. Yeah. Everyone's kind of... <clears throat> Lumpy. And I think they, they could redo like uh, the leveling system in it. I don't mm. think it works too well. 
with the type of game they're trying to go with. Like, and definitely more of a way more open world feel to it, I think, would make yeah. the game a lot better. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, and the system thing, I, I wouldn't even care if they changed that. Because systematic stuff, like, there's room to improve, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For me, the whole thing that I would really want to see is your character's visual style uh, have a more diverse uh, area that mm -hmm. it could go in based off your journeys. Being able to marry someone and have kids, stuff like that, I, I would definitely want them to keep around. But yeah, like if they redid the way you level, stuff like that would be really cool. And the bigger world is absolutely something I, I think they should be doing. Leveling was like, uh, depending on what you used, you got the experience for that mm -hmm. branch, technically. So like if you use like magic and then like, you get a lot of magic and you kill it with a melee, you get predominantly magic, magic experience, experience with a little yeah. bit of melee. I kind of like that system, but at the same time, I feel like they're the reason why Skyrim became so simple and straightforward. And yeah, because that system kind of worked for them, and then Skyrim was like, yeah, just as long as you use it, you're going to level up in it. Yeah, and you can unlock everything, and mm -hmm. your character's god. Mm -hmm. Yet you're still fighting fucking bandits who aren't scared of you at all. Yeah, that, ugh. No, because they're also wearing glass armor for some reason. Yeah, that, that's a whole other rant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, any last thoughts on that? Is, uh, does anybody completely oppose the idea of a fable? I never completely oppose the idea of anyone trying to make a, a new game as long as they take steps to make it a better game. So, mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Call that Fable Phoenix because it's going to rise from the ashes. <sighs> Hopefully. Uh, yeah, second news. Fuck, sorry. <laughs> Our, uh, the second bit of news is uh, Call of Duty, uh, the creator um, from Sledgehammer Games, says that the campaign in Call of Duty is going to take out regening health um, to make it feel more like every bullet counts. Like, you don't want to get shot. You need to be cautious. Um, and it's actually going to give your squad, because supposedly you're with a squad in the campaign, uh abilities like a class system um uh so one of them would be a medic one of them would be the fucking ammo guy one of them and uh he hinted in certain parts of the campaign you might not be near those people at all times so i mean you might have to be a little more cautious you might have to conserve your ammo a, a little bit more um what do we think of it i mean the regenning health system has been in here since uh the, la the last time there wasn't a regenerating health system was Call of Duty 2. So uh, what do we think about them kind of going back to the roots and uh, how do you think it'll, it'll play out? Well, one quote, too, that he said that, that kind of gets you in the mindset is he said, you're not a superhero. You can't just stand there taking seven bullets, ducking, shooting games, refreshing for us to deal with recruits who aren't tier one warriors to show that vulnerability. Um, I think it's neat. I think it's cool that it, Call of Duty doing anything different is, is a good thing. I like Call of Duty except for the last one. And uh, so them trying something else out, especially with three different people making or different groups of people making these games, there's room for somebody to kind of divert a little bit. And obviously, obviously, they're going after Battlefield 1. But uh, but it's cool. Um, it'll be a more immersive experience for me playing through World War II and not just like getting shot and then going and then being fine. <laughs> um, it, it, it'll be way more immersive having a medic running up and like helping you out. Um, I, I think it's neat. I'm curious on how it's going to work though, considering, like you said, you might be away from the medic. I'm mm -hmm. skeptical on the idea that like, they're not just come, gonna come running up to you and help you anytime you go down, though. Because mm -hmm. I mean, but it's Call of Duty, so you're just gonna fucking die and come right back anyway. It's gonna put a quote up of something about war, and then you're gonna be right back in it. So it doesn't really matter. I don't know. I know what weapons World War Three will be fought with, but World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. That's Albert Einstein. Walk quietly and smack people with a stick. That was Eisenhower or some shit. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen the gates of hell. Walk quietly and carry a big stick. There yeah, go. just smack that you around one. and stay quiet. It's like the ninja mantra. <laughs> um, Sun Tzu. I think they're just sticking to pretty much what they said. Like, you had quoted, mm -hmm. in fact, them going back to the roots for Call of Duty. So, um, it, I also think, as we just kind of said a Fable, it will be refreshing to have a change of pace for the, the series. I... I don't remember the last time I played a game where like you actually had to worry about your health uh, in that regard. So Arma two. Yeah. You barely had health in fucking Arma two. 
you know, you hear a bolt snap, and all of a sudden the game goes black, and you're just like, fuck, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this doesn't sound particularly fun to me, to be honest. Um, as a casual first-person shooter gamer, when I play campaign modes, I kind of enjoy the aspect of I can kind of fumble my way around it because I'm not particularly good at them. Mm. Um, I think it would be better to include this as an option, of like not necessarily like a difficulty mode, but like the option of like bullet shots actually matter. Um, so if you are more looking for a harder game mode, essentially, you can turn this on and make it more realistic. Um, or if you want to make it something more along the lines of like, if you're in combat, you can't regenerate health. When you're out of combat, your health regenerates, but at a much slower pace than traditionally, like it was before. Well, and I know you said you're opposed to the difficulty thing, but I thought it'd be interesting, like just with you, you say that, that maybe on easy mode, maybe do that, but they maybe to not discourage people from that, maybe call it like classic or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or have an option called like Call of Duty classic. Mm -hmm. You turn on something like that. I don't think they do that, but, but I, I. I get where you're coming from with that. Because, I mean, as a from a business standpoint, I'd worry I would lose the big demographic of people who are casual gamers who aren't particularly looking to be hardcore shooters, but still are loyal to the franchise because they can still play it so casually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with any other game, I would absolutely like agree with you on that, but it's Call of Duty, so this thing's going to sell like a motherfucker. I sure, guarantee sure. this thing's going to sell better than Infinite Warfare just because of the change of pace. Uh, it did wonders for Battlefield, so Battlefield 1 has done really well. Um, yeah. Any yeah, thoughts? I'm excited for it. I think it's cool. Yeah, I think it's uh, it'll, it'll it'll be nice. As I said before, I'm optimistic. So. I'm also curious in the co-op if you're going to be able to play different classes then, because that would be, be cool. Because cool. no I'm never going to play medic. I would. No one ever plays medic in I, the games I play. No, no, no. I love playing medic in FPSs. Well, in Battlefield One, you're usually the medic. I know. I, I love playing medic. Yeah. Um, and then maybe you could play it, because it's going to be cooperative, and you can be a healer. All I ever do is play healers in video games. Well, then you can be the, the dude with the fucking, um... <laughs> I just want a shotgun, that's all I want to do. Then you'd probably be an engineer, or a demolitionist, <laughs> or something. I don't know what the class is going to be. Call but, it a uh, wrecker. Uh, Alright, third bit of news. Uh, Nintendo's got a new console coming out. Don't get too excited, though. It's literally uh, just a 2DS XL. Uh, they just recently revealed that this is coming out. Um, it's going to cost $150, coming out July 28th. And it is essentially the uh, 3DS XL without the uh, 3D. And it uh, looks like made of cheaper plastic. But still, um, in my opinion, I think it looks uh, pretty cool. Um, I probably would have bought this when I bought my 3DS XL. What do you guys think of uh, <clears throat> them releasing a cheaper 3DS XL, essentially? Um, and who do you think this is for? Uh, people just want to get in the market that uh, are still kind of... Because mm, I, I know a lot of people bought the 2DS. And okay. then, yeah, and then uh, once the 3DS XL came out, they did take the plunge and actually buy the... Um, the newer DS. Uh, so I think it's it'll be for people just trying to get into the market, seeing what, seeing what it's about. Um, people with lots of kids who, uh, or even a couple kids, I mean, for 300 bucks, you can get them both a DS. I mean, that's not a bad deal. That was yeah. the point I was going to bring up was so, parents. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll, 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 I'll have to see it. Um, actually kind of bummed this didn't come out when I bought my 3DS XL because I didn't give a fuck about the 3D. Yeah, that's where I'm so, at too. Which was the other point I was going to bring up. The, the system is going to be for people who don't care about the 3D um, and just want access to those games or parents trying to be able to get this for their kids without dropping the big bucks. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think options is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, me and you both had two DSs. I I loved it. It was it was a good system. I like the three D. So the the when we you know when I did get the three DS, you know it was a huge upgrade for me. But I still think uh, the two DS was a solid system. So me too. And the only reason I even bought three DS XL is uh, for bigger real estate for screens and the second little nubbin. The the little analog. And it was it works really well. Wasn't it? Te um, and it's technically more powerful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I and I really like it too. But uh, but if this was out when I bought that, I probably would have did this because it's cheaper. It's going to play all the same things. And I don't care about 3D, even though mm -hmm. I think it's really neat they did that. Um, I and, and I agree with what you guys are saying. I also think that, that the 3DS has been out for so long now, I think since 2011, 
that uh and they've sold like 60 some million of the fuckers that i feel like most people are going to buy a 3ds probably own them so anyone who's now just now getting into this uh have have a cheaper option just like a slim so i mean like i, I think this is just like they're at the end of the uh, at, towards the end of the life cycle of this thing i think the next couple of years so it's probably them just going like hey here here you go like here's a cheaper version for anybody who didn't get one so i think it's smart i think it's cool I kind of wish they had this when I bought my 3DS because, I mean, I was intrigued by the 3D to begin with, but after playing it, I can't play it for more than like 10 minutes without getting yeah. nauseous. It's like staring at a magic eye puzzle. No, it, yeah, it makes me puke my pants. It's bad. <laughs> it's fucking bad. But I, I have no, <laughs> you know, it does nothing, like, uh, as far as like making me sick. I actually really enjoy it. So. Yeah, it doesn't do anything to me either, but I, it is more of a novelty for me. I'll check it out. I'm like, wow, it's really neat they did that. But then, like, I just want to play the game. And yeah. the 3D doesn't do anything for me. All so. I ever do with the 3D is like, I'll be playing my game, and then I'll be like, is this 3D? Shh, shh. Oh, yep, no, nope, turn it off. I'll see, like, Fire Emblem is a good example. I'll turn it off for the gameplay parts, but then when a cutscene happens, I turn it on. Because and it looks really good. And it looks fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But yeah. Well, maybe it's because I, maybe it's because I got, like, a janky eye or whatever, but... Uh, but it affects me, too, and I don't have a quote-unquote <laughs> janky eye. You don't got the jank eye? <laughs> That kind of stuff's going to affect people differently anyway. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Well, 3D movies do too. So, oh, I mean, yeah. like. See, I can sit through those just fine. Yeah. Well, this is a different kind of 3D, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. True. Yeah, one's just kind of showing you how it wants you to see it. The 3DS is manipulating your eyes where you're sitting and all that shit. So. Mm. Yeah. So, for our uh, fourth bit of news, um, let's move on in to the next bit of news. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about the jank guy. Let's fucking talk about uh, let's talk about Tekken. That seemed like a fucking yeah. The last two bits of news are about Tekken Seven or Tekken Seven related. Um, the creator, uh, producer, producer of Tekken Seven is trying to champ champion cross play, play cross platform playing multi online play. That was fucking jacked. Um, anyway, it wants people on PS4 play with Xbox and vice versa. Um, which I think is fucking awesome. Um, he says there is problems with it though. Um, cause fighting games, you are peer to peer. You connect directly to, you know, the other person. Um, so that means you're going to have to uh, trying to get past all the security pro protocols of Xbox and PSN at the same time, instead of just dealing with one. Uh, I think it. I think it brought up uh, user uh, IDs. You know, in case someone has Reaper six 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 as their fucking name on Xbox and PS four, but they could be two different people. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so that could become a problem also. But it is his dream. And uh, what do we think of cross plat platform play and the ups and downs of trying to get it to happen? <clears throat> I think we're all going to agree that it's awesome. That cr cross-platform play is, is great because it just makes the community bigger and we're all fans of Tekken 7 for playing it, so why not play together? It makes their game last longer. Um, it is really interesting, though. I mean, if they're going to do it, they're, they're picking the best time to try this because we just found out like a while back that, uh, that, that they are going to start allowing uh, Xbox One and uh, PS4 to uh, play together. But it is kind of scary to hear that, you know, they're having issues with it because of, of the technology of having, you know, you connect directly to one person outside of, you know, like a server. Mm. Um, but I think it's awesome. I think it's really cool that he's passionate about this. I think it benefits him. It benefits us. Um, if I'm going to be playing this game online, you know, I want the most amount of people, the most amount of opportunities to fight different people. This will do that. It's it's win win. I hope it works, and I hope they don't have uh, like you know server issues and shit. Even though technically it wouldn't be server issues, but you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. See, uh, my biggest problem with like um, cross and you're right, the tech is uh, is 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 kind of a problem. Because I remember playing on PS4, you cross play with Rocket League players, and um, I know sometimes there's a real weird kind of uh, server issues and stuff like that when you do cross play like that. I know also in Shadow Run, yeah, for the Xbox 360. From 2010. Yeah, um, you were able to play uh, ago. cross plat platform with PC characters also. But it was a murder fest because, of course, keyboard and mouse fucking Dominate. dominate a fucking 
uh, over controller. So it was really hard to fight like that. And and the server issues were there also. There was lag. There was just problems and problems and problems. So if they can weed all that shit out, um, you know, if if you hit punch and then fucking just a second later then it happens because with a fighting game you'd be nuts on so you can't well, yeah, latency's gonna hurt any game yeah so i mean it's if they can iron out all that bullshit you know i, I mean i'm i'm on board regardless because doubling your audience is fucking definitely worth it mm-hmm. but um yeah there's a lot of issues there and i think cross-platform play is something you got to do right kind of the first time um or else it might scare people away. Scare, well, yeah, I mean, that's with any online game, though. You need online to work regardless. Ubisoft. Calling you out. Every game, man. Every fucking game. There's a lot of technical technical aspects to this that are going to be very difficult for them to work out, especially with, you know, the Xbox accounts, trying to connect to PlayStation accounts, or the security system that, especially with a peer-to-peer connection service that most fighting games have, I mean, the quickest, simplest solution is to have everybody connect to a room that's run by the Tekken servers that has all of the security protocols lined up and ready to go. You just connect to it, which is your loading screen. You play in that and you disconnect. The only problem you have with that, then, is that if their servers go down, you can't play online against each other anymore. Um, it's, it's, It would be amazing if it happened, but I don't see it happening in a well-executed way. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Chevy. <clears throat> uh, cross-platform play has been done before, mm. just fine with Final Fantasy XI, uh, which was on PlayStation 3, PC, and Xbox 360, and they all played together with zero issues. So uh, you can do it, you just have to get the cooperation from the first-party uh, developers of the, the systems. As far as like the username issue, I mean, it's as simple as having them create a username for the game i don't see how this is an issue at all or even like when it says the name there can be like a green x or you know in the in the circle Mm. and then like a ps4 symbol next to the name yeah like a triangle or something it literally just as you boot the game for online play it'll just be like hey create a username yeah Yeah. done problem Mm -hmm. solved i mean i don't know i i'm sure there's there's stuff there that i don't know about that's going to make it more difficult but i've I just don't see how it could be that difficult if an MMO you know, was able to do it just fine. Well, see, and that's not even the biggest thing out of that story. That I, I don't even think he's really emphasizing that they're like that they're going to be that they're like looking at this and going like I don't know if we can do it. I think they're saying that you know this is something we want to do. Yeah. People don't really realize that it's kind of tough, but yeah. you know this is something we're doing. Um, I, I mean, if they, if it comes out, it's going to work. I, I think it's going to be fine. Um, if there's any server issues or whatever, that's just. That happens. I've played. I've played uh, fighting games that had online that lagged, and they're there's all on the same server. So I mean, like it just comes down to how good their networking is, and and if they figure that out, and if uh, Sony and Xbox or Microsoft are cool with this, um, you know, I, I I think they'll nail it. I think they got it, or they just won't do it. Yeah. So comes out in June second. So Tekken Seven. So I'm definitely getting it because I'm excited mm-hmm. for a. Uh, 3D perspective fighter because we haven't been getting any of those lately. Fuck no. It's all fucking uh, Street Fighter. Last bit of news. All right, our last bit of news also Tekken 7 related. Um, The character Roger, which is a kangaroo with boxing gloves, will not be making an appearance in Tekken 7. Um, The producer uh, Harada, he... uh, he mentions the viral video of the kangaroo getting decked out by that one guy trying to save his dog mm-hmm. uh, as the as one of the main factors of taking out Roger just because that video got so much backlash um, from you know animal activists and stuff like that. Um, and he's also saying that like maybe those people don't play Tekken, but he would still hear about it. He'd still have to deal with all the backlash from activists and stuff like that. Um, little side note though, Kuma, who is the bear in Tekken 7, still will be in the game. Because he is technically, what do you say, obviously stronger than a human being. Which they have not done research on kangaroos. But anyway, <laughs> dude, what Google do we think? Google them, man. They're fucking jacked. The guy in the video is grabbing a knife. 
Because he knows if he's going to fight this fucking thing, he's going to have to fucking, he's going to have to fight to live. Yeah. yeah. So what do we think about them taking out Roger, who's been a fucking staple of yeah. Tekken since two? Yeah. Um, leaving Kuma in and uh, their um, reasons for why they're kicking Roger to the car. <clears throat> it's complete bullshit. It's stupid. I, I'm really upset that they're even um, backing off from putting him in the game over this because if you're going to take him out of the game over animal cruelty or whatever, um, or, or that's a weaker animal, you need to take girls out of video games, fuck empowerment of women being able to fight. You take them out of games because it's wrong for guys to hit them. Uh, you need to stop making Far Cry because you shoot animals in that. Um, every game that has animals in it, you need to you stop making those uh, or take all the animals out of it. It's a fucking video game. It's not real. Um, if you don't like the idea of fighting a kangaroo, don't fight the kangaroo or don't buy the fucking game. Mm -hmm. It's it's that's ridiculous. That's this is one of the stupidest things I've fucking heard in a long time. Well, an even simpler solution I think would be just to make him the the raptor skin that they had for him, the alternate character costume back in like what was it, Tekken Tag, mm. where he was a raptor. I mean, they're not even fucking around anymore. That was in two also, yeah. There was two kangaroo skins and two rap raptor skins. But that's an extinct animal that I think we need to really respect. Yeah. The idea of fighting one when it's the last one on the on Earth uh, uh, really hurts my feelings. Okay, well, I don't care. What about Devilgen, then? He's the he's the devil. We need to preserve the devil. This is oh, he's yeah. he's a, <laughs> he's a unique and special creature. Very important to religion. I'm so fucking annoyed that they're keeping Kuma in. Not not the fact that it's I don't think logical. Kuma is a bad character, but yeah, there's no fucking re why fold on one. Where's your balls? Like, deal with it, dude. Like. It's, it's, for people who are fans of Tekken, expect Roger to be there, because he's literally been in every fucking Tekken yeah. since PlayStation 1. So, grow, grow your nuts, man. Where are they at? Grow them. Fucking, and, it, and if anybody actually did research on a kangaroo, no, they fucking murder. They drown, they're smart, they're fucking rough, man. And they're jacked like Mike fucking Tyson. They put people on, or put things in headlocks. Yeah, and I mean, straight up kill them. I mean, it's all about novelty. It's just about it's just about the idea of a kangaroo who's a boxer. It's it's funny. It's a fucking. Yeah, it's, it's a joke. It's a trope. I mean, like you have the running joke that you know people used to box kangaroos back in like the fifties. Mm. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, the, and you know what the thing is? Let me tell you what the thing is. Roger used to beat my ass <laughs> back in the day. So Should like, not when I, game whenever game? I fucking saw him, I was like, oh shit, I gotta face fucking Roger He's now. A so, yeah, kiss my ass. This is dumb. Chevy. I mean, you guys pretty much said it. I I really hate when developers backpedal uh, or remove things over. I guess political correctness or or some form of fucking activism. Uh, I can't even say it right now. Mm -hmm. But it's it's shitty. People can't even create a, video games are fantasy, plain and simple. Even if mm -hmm. they're replicating non fantasy, they're still a fantasy. It's a video game. It's not a real thing. If you, it'd be the same as telling people to take things out of books and movies and TV shows and shit like that. And it's it's stupid and. Not quite as extreme as what Josh said, but I do think there is a point where you need to just actually like this is my product. You take her, leave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, the sales are gonna fucking are gonna are gonna speak. Yeah. The game's gonna sell regardless. Mm -hmm. People are gonna buy. People want Tekken. I'm gonna buy Tekken. Nice. It's just it's it's so annoying that people have all these really strong opinions about what should and shouldn't be in video games. Because first off. They're, they're they're narrowed down to the to the demographic. In FPS, you shoot people and kill them. I don't like in real life when people get killed and shot. But I play FPS all the time. I like the 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 skill building, uh, the competitive aspects of it, the mechanics of, of aiming and shooting and all that stuff like that. But I'm not sitting there like fucking this this shouldn't exist because people are dying. No one's saying that shit. But fucking a kangaroo who's been in the series forever. Um, let's take Sonic out of fucking Sonic the Hedgehog because he gets hit by uh, Dr. Robotnik, who's a human. Well, I mean, like, where's your outcry like, for, like, World of Warcraft? 
Orcs, the first area, all you do is kill wolves over and yeah. over and over again. Where was your outcry then? And what about those cow people you can play as? The Torrent? Yeah, they should not be in that game. They're just animals. <laughs> I make Bengal tigers go fucking extinct in the Far Cry game. So, I mean, like, <laughs> if you're mad about that, I'm blowing them up with grenades and shit. I'm not, like, decking them out or fucking anything. I'll deck them out. I mean, I am fucking... If I see one, I'm like... I pull out my fucking RPG and I wreck them. And then you get to watch them skin them. So, I mean, where's the problem there? What's the issue? I'm sure there was a problem. It's just that the developer... The Ubisoft did not give a fuck. (laughs) Um, What was that game, that fighting game that was coming out or might still be coming out where there was a scantily clad character and people were bitching about it and the developer, it's a Japanese game, the developer's like, fine. He's like, you, we won't even tech him? It was tech him. Yeah, okay. Well, and it wasn't, it wasn't scantily clad. It was uh, too, po- like, very, like, J-poppy. And the people were complaining because it, it didn't look at in place, even though it's culturally appropriate to the people making it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And people bitched about it. And he's like, fine. He's like, he's like, you guys don't get it. You guys don't want it. We're not going to give it to and you. Make some big he's buff, like, like we'll, we'll just, just make some big buff guy. And he'll be in the he'll be in the military, he'll have guns, and be like, oh, he's like, you know, you guys will love it. Like, what happened to that guy? Yeah, uh, yeah, just sticking it to the fucking assholes pulling their fucking. Bullshit. Anything that's created is made by a creator. If you don't like it, don't participate in it. Don't watch it. Don't read it. Don't listen to it. Don't play it. If you if you want it to go away completely because you're that pissed off about it, tell people to not buy it and see if it works. Probably won't because people love tech and they're going to fucking buy it. It's a good game and no one gives a shit that a uh, um, representation of a, of a fucking kangaroo is there. It's a video game. Mm-hmm. It's a some, lot of shit in video some games. Some people just don't get that. It, 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 they do get that. They're just fucking stupid and they're just making a big deal out of something because they're bored and they got nothing going on in their fucking lives. But that's a whole other thing. I can I could talk about that for fucking ever. Um, any last things on uh, on that subject? Just make him a raptor. Sack up. How about say just fucking don't take him out at all. Just keep him in it. It's not gonna affect the sales. Those people aren't gonna buy the game anyway. They just found out about this one. What the fuck? I never played Tekken. I was like, why is there a kangaroo in it? Yeah. The bear can stay because he's stronger? That's stupid. Let me tell you something. I'm still going to beat the bear. And I told Seth this off camera. In WWE, I used to fight the women all the time for the 64 version just because they were easy. Easy pickings. I could do whatever the fuck I fucking wanted to to them. And they never fought fought fucking back because for some reason every girl was, their fucking overall was in like the 50s. But anyway, where was that? Where's the fucking outcry there? Well, then, or, or, is it, or is it fake? There's gonna be one now. <laughs> I fucking powerbombed her through the hell in a cell, like, wrecking them. I didn't even care. <laughs> then that little bitch boy, uh, Eric Bischoff. But, um, but still, <laughs> there's no, no, no outcry for that. It's a different demographic of people who play those games. People <laughs> who like to beat women, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah. Everybody just calm the fuck down. Everything's fine. It's video games. No one gives a fuck. Only you do and you don't really. I don't think you really fucking care. Um, but with that, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Taste TV on Taste of Gaming. As always, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, Taste of Gaming. Check my streams out on the channel. Check him out on Twitch, Tasty underscore Fruit. Check Josh out on Twitch. I never remember it. Tasty Loot Josh. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to remember it. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. My name's Seth. I'm Josh. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. Until next episode, which uh, will be for sure this Friday, we're going to be doing Taste the Cast, but make sure to stay stick around all week. I'm going to be streaming. Um, have a good week, guys, and take it easy. Ah, my janky eye!